Oh, there you go, Sunrise. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Of course, my girl, Sunrise, is eating, and you know, we have done a lot of feeding videos in the past, but I thought I would not only do a feeding video, but maybe take you guys through our process, because when we're feeding snakes like Sunrise here, we want to do some kind of cool shots, some different angles, different things like that. I figured I would just share what we're thinking behind it, show you some of our crazy kind of camera angles and stuff like that. In the meantime, we're going to feed some amazing snakes here at the Reptarium. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Of course, we love to do time lapses and actually Jay has a G7X Mark II right here. It's a Canon camera. We like to shoot one frame every three seconds for a time lapse for bigger snakes like this and one frame every two seconds with smaller snakes to get that kind of really cool time lapse feeling. So we're going to go ahead now that she has started we're just going to set the angle up here and we're going to just let it roll and it might take anywhere from 15 or 20 minutes. The downside to doing this is a lot of times you have to sit and watch them eat because if they move out of frame you lose your time lapse right. So the process of actually feeding snakes like Sunrise here Although in most cases I might feed and just go on to the next day. This might take me 10 or 15 minutes just to watch her eat this to make sure I've got a cool time lapse. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna see if Casper, my boy, eats over here. And you can notice Jay is actually shooting with an EOS R Canon, shooting with an 11 to 24 lens, nice wide angle at 120 frames a second, just to get a second angle on us here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see if Casper wants to eat for us. Come on, bud, you wanna eat? There he goes. Right like that. Now he didn't take the rat really good. The one thing you're gonna have to notice is if they don't hit it right on the head, oftentimes they'll let go and they'll have to start over again. So no sense in starting a time lapse when he's gonna let go. So we'll have to just kind of watch him when he finally lets go, gets the head, then we'll start the time lapse. It's interesting, I never see the children's python down like this ever. He's always up in these rocks over here. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it actually eats. It might just be looking for food, I'm not sure. Come on, buddy. Sometimes you have to tease feed these just a little bit to get them to take food. And then after all that teasing, it literally just takes it off the tongues like nothing. That's the interesting thing about snakes is that, you know, you have to be patient, figure out what they want. Uh, this children's python was definitely a silly little monkey, but uh, I'm glad that it finally took food. What a weird little animal. I definitely like a lot of interesting angles. So sometimes I'll use a GoPro or an action cam on the end of forceps, just so that I can get kind of that point of view of what it's like to go in and feed. So we're gonna go ahead and feed Pickles, the green tree python. Let's see if she wants to eat. Just like that. <laughs> so again, more angles, more interesting shots, the better. I'm gonna be honest with you, I am super excited to be back to kind of building some things. And, and by the way, we have some pretty big builds coming up, I'm not gonna to lie to you, but uh, more on that later. I do actually have to replace this cage here, and that's gonna require a bunch of things because the enclosure is gonna be more like this, where it's front loading like this. So I'm gonna to have to actually break a little bit of this out, remove all of this to able to get in here. And then the Woma Python, that's an absolutely gorgeous snake right there, can start coming out because right now it's just hard. Again, you have to go behind the scenes, you have to reach down that thing to pull it out so it's absolutely impossible. I am super excited with the way these guys are looking. Can't wait to finish them out, get the alligators out here full time. It's going to be so cool to have them kind of always right here and not tucked away in back so we can mess with them even more than we do now. So uh, regardless, let me know what you guys like. Do you like build outs? Because trust me, we have some pretty massive things coming up over the next few months. And you guys know that I love feeding snakes. Next up is Peaches, the Honduran milk snake. Come on, Peaches. There she is. <laughs> she is definitely a little monster too. And it's a great snake. That's the thing that's so amazing about the animals here at the Reptarium is they're super aggressive feeders, just like peaches here, but they're really tame when they're not being fed. That's super important. But uh, I hope that you guys are learning a little bit about how we do things here when we're feeding. Let me know in the comments which angles you guys like best, what else you'd like to see more of, maybe a little less of. Just let me know down in the comments what you're thinking. Next up is Ivy. I love feeding this girl. She's so energetic. And uh, sometimes, again, I'll just put a GoPro or an action can on a mic. Monopod. You know, the thing that's nice when you're trying to get cool shots is that a GoPro now or an action cam is relatively inexpensive and a monopod's like 10 or 15 bucks. So you can get some really cool shots by just going really close to it as you're offering the food. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Whoa, woo, woo. I tell you what, the power of that animal is ridiculous. 
I don't ever want to be on the biting end of that animal for sure. Did you see the power of her striking? Woo doggy, that was insane. Lori, I have a little bit of a bone to pick with you because you clickbaited me yesterday. What? You clickbaited me yesterday. I don't even understand. So the deal was yesterday before I left, I had a late night. I wasn't gonna get home till like 8.30. You left, I don't know, 4.30 or something like that. You said you were picking up steaks for dinner. So you clickbaited me. So the rest of the time I was like, oh, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna eat some steak dinner tonight. There I get home not, at 8.30. There was not a clickbait. I bought the steaks and I left them at you work. You clickbaited me. I, I, I was home, I, I was smiling it. ear to ear, thinking I'm getting me some steak. And I get home and I got tacos. Oh, you're not nearly as mad as I was when I realized I forgot them. Well, stop clickbaiting me. Stop Shut it. Up. Can we get steak tonight? Listen, it, it made you come home, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and tacos were good too, but she still clickbaited me. Next up is my girl, Honey. Definitely looks like she's ready to go. Woo! There she is. There you go, sweetie. There it is. Good job, hon. Way to go. Let me know down in the comments if you guys keep snakes. What's your favorite snake to feed? Or is there a dream snake that you really want to feed? Uh, and just tell me about it. I mean, what it is. I mean, for me, probably anacondas are like that dream animal when it comes to non-venomous snakes feeding because they are just different next level type animals. <laughs> I love the fact that Night Fury has graduated to rabbits. Uh, definitely starting to get big. Where you at, buddy? Where you at? Come on, come on. Oh, here he comes. Oh, look at him. Ah, there you go, buddy. There you go. I tell you what, as he's getting bigger, just more and more beautiful. What a gorgeous snake, huh? <laughs> Loves to nip. I, I love this snake. And it's really calming down, to be totally honest with you. It used to be absolutely crazy. Now it's actually relatively good when it comes to, to biting, to be totally honest with you. Come on, little girl. Oh, there you go. Look at you. Absolutely wonderful. And like I said, this animal lived up to its name, loved to nip before. Now it's actually pretty tame. It'll strike sometimes when it's in its cage, but once you get out, dog tame. Again, everything around the Reptarium just is getting tamer and tamer. Let's see if Jeffrey wants to eat. Just starting to go into shed, so he may or may not eat. You want to try, bud? You want to try? Oh, gosh. Woo. I tell you what. I wasn't prepared for that. It kind of got, I mean, I was holding it like really close, thinking it wasn't gonna strike it. Oh, oh yeah, he was uh, He was still ready to eat. Mr. Nubbins, the Dominican red mountain bow is always usually pretty good about eating. There you go. And I love the way that these guys actually pose like that, where they'll get up there and they'll just crush it. Definitely. You can see that these guys will eat a lot of birds and bats in the wild just by the way they perch on a rock like that and will come out and just ready for it. These again are the ones that sit in cave openings and just wait for bats to come out at night and just start picking bats off. One of the coolest little animals for sure. Like I mentioned before, this is an exercise in patience. You can see Honey is just finished up her rat. We're time lapsing over here and kind of got to keep an eye on the time lapse. Over here we have Ivy just getting ready to take her rabbit right there with a the time lapse ready to go. So it's kind of like hurry up and wait, right? You feed and then you sit around and you wait for them to get done before you can move on. So even though this might be a 15 minute feed video, the truth is we've spent hours and hours of time trying to get the coolest shots. I hope that you enjoy it. This is my hypo Brazilian rainbow boa. And I'll be honest with you guys, we had a disaster year when it came to rainbow boas. He was supposed to be my stud male and he didn't do a very good job of breeding this year at all. We had infertile slugs, we had dead babies. We didn't produce even one good rainbow boa, Colombian or Brazilian this year and typically we have a lot I mean last year we had like hundred and fifty Colombian rainbows and a bunch of Brazilians we had a disaster year this year but that just goes to show you even with the fact that we had a great colubrid gear a great ball python year and other pythons and a bunch of other boas like sand boas it always seems to be that way it's hard to put together a season where you have everything going great you know so sure enough this year we missed on our rainbows and I think what happened is we bred about three weeks later than we usually do and that window may just have closed I'm not gonna to lie to you so this year we're going to try to get back on track stay on our schedule and make sure that mr stud hypo brazilian rainbow boa has the best chance of hopefully producing and that's just the way it goes when you're breeding reptiles you know sometimes you have good years sometimes you don't this year it was a big disappointment for brazilian rainbows <laughs> Girl 
Perdita actually missed a meal last week because she was in shed. So I think she's going to be pretty ready to eat. And you can see she smells that food. And that's the thing that's amazing about snakes is that they know when it's coming. They can smell it in the air and they just completely change their mannerism. Here we go, baby. Here we go. There we go. Oh, there. Perfect hit. And that's what you really want. You know, when they can hit it right in the nose, you know they're going to eat good. If not, they let it go and they search around for it. But regardless, she definitely needed a meal after shedding last week and skipping a meal. So uh, I know she's happy and she's unbelievably gorgeous. This is a relatively small meal for Daisy, but I don't have any real big rabbits thought out. So I'm just going to see if she wants a little small rabbit and it'd be a nice little meal for her. Come on, little girl. Oh, there she goes. Whew. She took a second where she was like, I'm not sure if she's gonna eat, but uh, then she definitely crushed that rabbit. Again, not a big rabbit for her, but we'll give her a couple small ones, which will suffice for the week. The thing I love about Maze is this enclosure of his right here, and the fact that he just stays right in that little hole right there. It's so cool because again, when I made this, I literally attached this to the back of the cork, and when I saw this cork at Josh's Frogs, I was like, I wanna make an enclosure for a corn snake, and maybe he'll stay inside there, like kind of like what you'd see a tree in the wild with the corn snake and literally Maisie stays in there 99% of the time. I think it's absolutely amazing that it was kind of the vision that it might work and it's worked out perfectly. Typically it doesn't work that way but Maze is a super cool animal and his enclosure is so dope. Definitely excited that this will be the last time I have to feed the Woma this way. We'll have front opening cages next week that we're gonna put in so this way I can actually get to her and I can open up the cage, take her out more often but then I can feed her from the front. But as for now I gotta go back and kind of blind blindly feed this animal. Never a good thing when you have a snake to blindly feed them. Crackle is always happy to eat. As a matter of fact, if you're not careful, you get your fingers too close, it'll eat your fingers. This guy is just in food mode all of the time. Come on, buddy. Come on over here. Right over here. Don't get my finger. Don't get my finger. I should be using forceps right now, but I'm not because I'm stupid. Oh! There he goes. <laughs> There's always that tingle. Even after tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of snakes in that bed, still that just before they strike. You get that little tingle in you like that's just awesome. I'm glad I have it after all these years because I still enjoy feeding snakes so much. There you go, sweetheart. Aww. <laughs> How cute was that? I love it when sometimes, again, that first strike is vicious. The second one, just like they just open their mouth and take it. I love it when reptiles do that. And my theory behind that is that, you know, in their minds, they may think, I've never seen food before. I may not see it again because in the wild, they might not come across food for a long time. But once they've eaten their first meal, they kind of calm down. They go, all right, well, I've already eaten. And then they do it much slower the second time. Same thing with crocodilians. And another one of those kind of behind the scenes things, you figure when I've got a time lapse, I have to then go in and get it after it's done, right? And of course, we've got Ivy right here. This can be some of the most dangerous moments, to be honest with you, is when you're going in there because they're in feed mode and your hand is right there. So uh, a lot of times I'll get bit and you guys don't even see it because it's when I'm pulling a time-lapse camera out. <laughs> Last animal we're feeding is the D. Alberts Python Ace. Come on, little monkey. Oh, man. Ace was ready to go for sure. I hope that you guys enjoyed all the feeding. I want to know in the comments, what shot did you like the most? What would you like to see more of? What would you like us to do that we missed? You know, give me ideas. I want to make our feeding videos some of the most awesome YouTube videos you could ever watch. So let me know down there. And if you did like today, here's another feeding video right here. And here's an entire playlist of feeding videos over here. Can you hit that subscribe button? While you're at it, can you turn those post notifications on? Remember to have an absolutely wonderful day. And you better be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.